Hello, and welcome to the Big Time Strength Podcast, featuring small school strength coaches from around the nation that are making the big time where they are at. Before we get to the episode, we'd like to thank our sponsors that make this podcast possible. Team Builder is a strength and conditioning software that allows coaches to build training programs, create wellness questionnaires, access and track athlete data, and more. Athletes can log data using phones, tablets, or laptops and can watch exercise videos so they know exactly what to do. Coaches can use the tools within the platform to monitor athlete recovery and readiness. Be sure to sign up now with code BIGTIME and you will gain access to a 30-day free trial. This episode is also brought to you by Powerlift. Taking your athletic facility from concept to completion can be a challenge. It is Powerlift's goal to make the process as seamless as possible from start to finish. Their weight equipment is made from the toughest materials that can withstand excessive use from coaches and athletes for years to come. It's sought after for its unique design, customizable appearance, affordability, and superior warranty that training facilities deserve. Powerlift helps design weight rooms with the athlete in mind, and they pride themselves on their ability to outfit athletic facilities based on a team's unique goals. That's why high schools, universities, professional sports teams, and athletic performance facilities around the world have chosen Powerlift to help maximize their strength training goals. Call Powerlift today to be contacted with a rep in your area and give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to see for yourself why our clients are Powerlift proud. Finally, this episode is also brought to you by Vitruve. Vitruve is a velocity-based training system designed for colleges and high schools around the world. It is accurate, reliable, and affordable. The software is quick and easy to set up and use with a whole room of athletes simultaneously. Coaches have chosen Vitru because it simplifies VBT and allows them to seamlessly integrate it on a daily basis. Check out Vitru now for your school's free demo unit. Now, let's get to this week's episode. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Big Time Strength Podcast. Today is an awesome opportunity uh, to bring on somebody that you all are probably pretty familiar with. Today um, is my pleasure to bring on Gage Rozier. Gage is in a different setting than he was when he started this podcast, but now uh, he is being able to impact a uh, whole community, the community that he grew up in, and and uh, just excited to bring him back on the show. Uh, at the very beginning of when he started the podcast, uh, he he brought me on for one of the episodes and did an interview, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, that was a long time ago. And now I wanted to return the favor and see if we could get an interview for Gage. So thankful for him to come on. Thanks for him uh, sharing what he does with us. And if you've never listened to Gage before, uh, he is a big critical thinker. He does a great job with systems. And one of the things that that I love being able to see now is how he is bringing that to the private setting and what that looks like for him and his gym. So Gage, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate the opportunity to interview you this time. Yeah, buddy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, really excited about talking to you, number one, getting to catch up a little bit. But appreciate you just keeping the Big Time Strength uh, podcast alive. I think we started it in, I think, 2017. That might be wrong, but somewhere in there. So it's come a long way. Uh, You keep putting out episodes and been listening to it. You do an awesome job. But uh, yeah, excited to talk shop a little bit. Appreciate you having me. I don't remember when it started. But man, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of learning along the way. Awesome opportunity to meet and and, uh, learn from a ton of different coaches. And uh, this one, I'm still, every time I listen to you, I still like learn a ton and just have to have my notes ready. So I've got my pen, I got my paper, I'm ready to roll. Uh, The first question that I have for you is, what does it look like in your new setting? Kind of what's the background of your situation? Um, a lot of people know your background in general, but maybe to, if you want to breeze through that, you can. Um, and just and just a little bit of like the demographics and just the ins and outs of your day right now. Yeah, so quickly, um, spent my first seven or eight years in strength conditioning and collegiate side um, as a GA at Northwest Missouri State intern. Um, then was hired at William Jewell College uh, Division II school out of Liberty, Missouri, Kansas City, uh, Missouri, and was the director of athletic performance there for five years. Um, had a great time, uh, learned a lot, enjoyed the job, resigned in 2021 from that position. And my wife and I moved our family back to my hometown in Mount City, Missouri, uh, where I have started my own private um, sector gym. And, and we also are involved in some other family businesses, um, our family farm, row crop farm in Northwest Missouri, as well um, as our newest family project, the Our Farm Distillery, 
So I have a big role in both of those operations, um, as well as um, my gym, which is obviously what we're here to talk about today. But um, as far as the context around kind of the gym and what I offer, um, how it runs, um, kind of my uh, tagline I use is building lifelong athletes. So I try to bring, you know, my my passion and, and quote unquote expertise, I guess, from the collegiate strength conditioning, I try to bring that kind of athletic performance model, obviously to our rural community, but offer it for um, a variety of age groups and trying to give appropriate training to um, a different uh, amount of age groups um, at the right time. So we offer training year round for seventh through 12th grade athletes. Um, and as well as an adult program where I've got people from 25 to 75 um, and everywhere in between. So that's obviously a challenge. Um, it's exciting. It's different than spending just your typical collegiate weight room style. But then I offer, offer also seasonal programs for like the younger athletes and kind of that fourth through sixth grade, as well as clear down to uh, preschool to through third grade program. So we're working for with athletes literally from four years old to 75. So um, it's a lot of fun. I get to learn a lot about both ends of the spectrum because I've spent the majority of my career kind of in the middle there with the collegiate athlete, but um, learning, you know, what the younger kids need and how to deliver that in a, an awesome way, as well as what our adults need on the other end of the spectrum um, is something I've had to learn a bunch about. Um, still learning, still trying to tweak things, but it's um, it's been a lot of fun so far. Yeah, Gage, what I'd really like to do is maybe just go into each one of those programs and you can start where you want to. If you want to start at the youngest or if you want to start with the most prevalent, either way is fine. But I just want to hear about your programming methodologies, why you choose what you choose, maybe how many days a week you're training and kind of the the things that you want to keep in mind as you're programming for each one of those populations. So I know this is a long question and take your time with it. Don't feel like you are being rushed in any way because I I want people to be able to listen to all the offerings that that you do. Yeah. So I'll start just from the youngest and work up. And when we can talk about the business side of it too, if you want, but I'll just stick with the programming for now, but because the programming and the service has to match with how you're offering on the business side too, which is, that's been a different challenge. And again, another thing I'm still just always thinking about and maybe tweaking if I need to, but just from a programming side, our youngest programs called, we call it young guns. Um, I tell our kids, um, why we call it young guns. And we say, cause we're young and we got guns, baby. Cause that, so that's what we call it, young guns. I don't know. That's what we came up with. But um, again, this is, I, I market it as probably first through third grade. Um, but as long as we're not sold out within the age group, I'll, I'll take some younger kids. Um, I haven't got some like preschoolers in this, this session. Now I do this seasonally. Um, but from a programming standpoint, it's a lot of like obstacle course, uh, basic movement, uh, uh, movement skills. So you got, you know, skipping and, and hops and crawls, single leg hops, um, different crawling. Um, we do some like squats to a med ball and stuff, but there's no like traditional, um, training format. It's a lot of games, a lot of tag games. They like to hang from the racks. Um, my general format is we'll do like a general warm up activity where it's, Right now, it's a lot of just like getting up off the turf as fast as you can and hopping on a single leg or, you know, doing rolls and stuff like that. And then we'll always end each section with some type of game. We do like sprint games, relays. Um, well, they like to do like med ball slams, med ball, carry a med ball over your head, so a light med ball, obviously, um, stuff like that. So it, it's very like obstacle course style. Um, it's a lot of, if you know Jeremy Frisch, um, a lot of his content I've taken and taken some of his courses um awesome awesome stuff so it's a lot of that letting young athletes just explore movement um giving them some just very loose rules and let them just not trying to coach them into how to do it just let them go explore in the best ways to to explore movement um that's a lot of fun it's i'm not trying to be but i'm trying not to say it's my most fun group to coach but it's been my most um it's where I'm, it's, I guess it's where I'm focusing most of my professional development right now is with like that area, that age group. And cause I got a good thumb obviously on the kind of the more advanced developed athlete. 
Um, but really giving those kids what they need has been fun for me to learn and always trying to add new stuff to it. It's been a lot of fun. So that's our Young Guns program. Um, from there, we have our next program offers a foundation. And both the Young Guns and Foundation are both, they're offered as camps. So I offer them seasonally in a four to eight week block, one to two days a week, just depending on where I could fit in the schedule. Um, foundation is kind of, it's a lot of Young Guns stuff, but then we dose in learning some traditional training patterns. Um, like right now, we're actually in the middle of offering all these camps. So like right now, our foundation, they do some med ball squats to a box. Uh, we do lunges, we do rows off of, off of TRX straps. Um, we're doing like some negative chin-ups, trying to think of some other things we're doing. We're doing farmer carries. Uh, we do some sled pushes and stuff like that. But it's, it's at a low volume, low dose. It's, you know, two rounds of stuff, but it's also a good amount of games mixed in there. You know, we got, we have a gator ball game that they, the kids love to play. It's essentially ultimate Frisbee um, is essentially what is our space is kind of just big enough to be able to do something like that. We play that almost every day, um, type of like sprint relay games. We do a bunch with, um, so it, it's kind of blending, you know, your traditional training that we do mostly with our performance group, which is our seventh through 12th graders, but also keeping it a lot of fun. And we, we do a lot of crawling and obstacle course type stuff with them, but just giving them a dose of teaching them the squat hinge push pull patterns um, that we'll get into with our, and really start to load with our older kids. So that's a lot of fun to teach as well. Um, to coaches, it kind of, it's the best of both worlds. So it's a lot of fun, uh, a group to coach. Then our next group is our performance group. This is seventh through 12th grade. And this is, we offer this year round. These are, this is based off a of membership gym membership model, uh, which is based off a of three day a week program. And this is our traditional strength training. We kind of follow a tier system model. Be very similar to how I would program our college kids. Just, you know, your a lot of squat hinge, push pull concepts. Um, we do obviously like right now, a good chunk of my kids that come in right now are all similar age, a lot of middle school kids. But then I got a dose of um, kind of varsity level basketball in-season athletes right now that come in and, and we will modify the training for them within the session. They're all working off the same template, but we do make modifications um, here and there based off injury experience, what they need, et cetera. But it's um, it's a squat hinge push pull, but then within the programming of that and within the tier system, we always do some type of carry well, it's a farmer carry, a suitcase carry. We did, this morning we did waiter carries above the head. Uh, and we always try to do something with our sleds as well, whether it's a sled push, a drag. Um, we like to tie the ropes to the sled and do like sled rope poles. We always do type of sled work too. Because a, a strategy with this, the challenge, um, is we're in a real community where with our middle school kids, they aren't necessarily training at their school yet. But a big challenge for me is being able to blend in that relationship with like our older high school kids that, you know, maybe they're training at their school and I want them to. I, I encourage it is not my business model to poach kids from their school uh, to just train with me. Now, if they want to do that. That's their choice. But I, I'm not at all trying to go into the high schools and say, oh, you should just train with me instead. In a perfect world, I want to be able to compliment um what they're doing at their schools, fill in gaps where needed for the kids who want extra work. You know, that's the, that's the perfect model that I would love to do. So with my programming, you know, most schools around here at least aren't doing a whole lot of carries and sled sprints and that type of work. So that's why I try to include that a lot in our training. We're always doing some type of sprint to start the day, whether it's, you know, a lateral focus or linear or a resisted sprint. We're always doing something something fast. We're always doing some type of med ball throw, um, some type of jump. So it's stuff that um, we're trying to encompass the whole spectrum of athletic development there within each session. They're 45 minutes, so it does get pretty tight, but it, it works pretty well. And we can dive into more specifics on how that, but that, that's a general structure of how we, we program our performance stuff. And then my strong life program is my adult stuff. And this is honestly... I program it just like our performance, 
I just sub out like the jumps and sprints and put in more like core mobility stuff. I mean, that's basically what I do. I mean, the sets and reps might be different, but like from an exercise to exercise standpoint, 95% of it is the same as our, what our kids are doing. We just don't do a whole lot of the jumps and sprints and stuff, but our adults are strength training um, off a of tier system type format. And we do sled pushes and carries and the whole nine yard. They did sumo. I had sumo deadlifts this morning with 40, 50, 60 year old men and women. They did a great job at it. You know, some of them are just using 65 pounds, but they're doing it and they love it. And we got some even older than that, where I do have a, have it. I call it strong life light, basically where it's a lot of the same movement patterns, but we'll just do basically a lot of bands and kettlebell work and stuff like that, depending on what people need. So it's the same model tier system type format, which I'm sure most people are familiar with just modified within the session for what people need. Cause those adults, they, I mean, obviously there's a lot, a lot going on there with a lot of people, you know, they got bad backs, bad knees, whatever it is. There's, there's quite a few modifications that go on there. So you talked about some of your professional development is coming through or is coming from the young guns perspective, kind of that pre-K through third or, or whatever your, your time frame was with that. And what are some of your resources that you're using for that? What are some good places to look and, and uh, what are the things that you're learning? Well, the main one I'm looking at right now is the, the Jeremy Frisch stuff. Like he's got some, um, I purchased some of his athletic, um, athletic, long-term athletic development courses that he offers he also has like a membership online website, like membership portal. It's got a lot of good stuff. Um, I guess the biggest challenge for me on that is how to, you know, in college or even my high school kids, it's 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 very easy for me to lay out a training session. You know, we're going to check these boxes. So we'll start with the warm up. Obviously, we're going to hit this type of mobility work and then we're getting to our linear speed day on Monday. And then Wednesday, we're going to do a more lateral change of direction or whatever. And then we're going to hit our tier system strength work. Like it's it's so like system based and it's easy to check those boxes off where I struggled and still learning is, OK, how do I structure a training session for a fourth grader? <laughs> because we're not following the tier system with this. So I I can't I can't just show up and do something randomly every day. That's just not how my mind works. I struggle with that. So trying to learn, okay, what are the new sections now? You know, if my high school kids have got our strength training section, you know, what's the new section or new uh, trait that I need to train every day? And what exercises, what games, what skills do I know how to teach to fit in with that? And how can I progress this? Like, that's the challenge that I'm still learning, still trying. And Jeremy's got some great stuff, honestly, on that. And I got some here, I think, but you know, within his materials, I've, I've learned kind of on how he, you know, he lays stuff out by movement skills, some strength skills, coordination skills, um, and just the different type of uh, activities you can do within that and making them game based where the kids are having fun. But, you know, I don't I, I also need to be teaching these kids some like quality stuff, too, where I'm not charging their parents just to have them come have recess. It's important to me that it's they're also learning important skills within that too. So there's a there's a marriage there that needs to exist, and we're, we're finding that. Um, I'm really happy with how it's gone so far. Um, this most recent edition of our Young Guns Camp, but there's certainly um, I'm trying to think of some other resources that I've been looking into. You know, on Twitter you'll find a lot of good follows. Um, I follow a lot of PE um, accounts. Honestly, you know, a lot of young PE accounts that they do some really cool games within the PE setting um, that it's, it's a lot of the same stuff, but just trying to figure out what works in my space, obviously in a time format um, is the challenge there. That's kind of where my brain goes is this is just like, you've talked about it before, even on your own podcast of like just long-term athletic development, what it looks like um, to take somebody from a young gun all the way through a strong life and kind of connecting the dots all the way through. And you're actually doing it. So like, we have to do vertical articulation and look how our standards and our assessments and the things that we offer align all the way from uh, beginner garden, which is like pre-K all the way through 12th grade with the other teachers that I work with. And what you're doing is you're doing it all in house. So you're doing it. It's you that has to connect it not only from, 
you know, for me, K-12 or beginning garden through through 12, but, um, and it's not even me, I'm just doing the high school portion and then just working with these people. It's like, you're doing it from that pre-K all the way through <laughs> until they die, right? That's like, that's the thought process. And I think that's just really, really fun to think through and and see how you can build things off of another thing. In education, it's called scaffolding. That's just like building things, right? You can't you can't build without a foundation and you just keep on building up from there. And yeah. I really think that um, having all of these things to think through probably makes you a better strength coach along the way for each section or each, um, I don't know what you call it, each offering. You know, uh, I it's a lot of good stuff to think through. And I, I often say this, uh, is that I think most strength coaches, if they coach a sport, also, they're actually a better strength coach because then they get to see like movement qualities and and actions and not just weight room KPIs, but actual training um, that carries over to sport. And then I think it's almost the same thing when you start to see like working with young athletes all the way through professional athletes. It's like, man, if if you do that, it's just like a leg up, um, an opportunity to see, man, how do you get a kid to actually get to that spot? And I've got a couple of guinea pigs at home called my kids, but I'm excited to, to learn from you along the way through your social media platforms and conversations with you, man. It's it's good stuff. Um, when you have any one of these people come through the door, sometimes you have to sell a couple of people on it. So if it's a kid coming in, you have to sell the kid, but then you also have to sell the parents. Um, I I want to I want to wrap that in to the question of like, what is the experience of a trainee coming in? What's your mission? How are you onboarding? What's it look like to retain? Uh, kind of that question. And it's open-ended, answer it how you want to, but I'm interested to see how you go about doing that. So in transparency, this is probably the biggest challenge for me is onboarding and it lo- needs to look a little different, obviously for each program. So with like my, with my young kids, I don't do, a whole, I don't do hardly any um, you know, it's not a pre or post test situation. So it's what they're getting out of it is much more of just like how they feel about it and how, you know, they feel from start to finish and the stuff they learned. But as you know, we get older into performance group and our, our strong life, they're much more in the part of long-term athletic development or, you know, training itself where, it's more results and they're looking for certain results. You know, it's our adults. They want to lose weight, gain weight or gain muscle, get stronger, et cetera. Um, obviously our seventh through 12th grade athletes, um, they are looking to be bigger, faster, stronger, all those things. So onboarding looks differently for all of it. Like with our younger kids, there's not a whole lot of onboarding because it's more of a camp style where we show up and, and start and train. I'll, obviously I have certain things that in the first couple of days of camp, we want to, we're going to teach athletic position. We're going to teach fundamental jump patterns and stuff like that for older kids, especially. Uh, but with like our performance group, we have five things that we assess. And I would like in a perfect world to be able to assess this, at least three of them, three of the five within the first week of an athlete's training. And those five things are our vert jump. We do a triple broad jump, which I used to do a 10 yard sprint for something like linear explosive, but my space is just not quite big enough. I found for an athlete to really go all out on a 10 yard sprint. So I kind of, I went to a triple brow jump, which has its pros and cons and then a, a med ball throw our, our girls throw a six, our boys throw a 10, like those three things. I feel pretty confidently an athlete can show up and within the first week we can get a baseline number off of them. And then the other two things is a trap bar deadlift. We do a five rep max and a bench press five rep max and on both of those we we don't really have max out days it's just we find that max within just our normal training so we do like a a, i call it a power club where all those testings are tied to a scale um and you know they're trying to get a certain amount of points where that as far as retention that's a every it's a cool tool for the athletes just to be able to see how much better they've gotten. It gives them one number to show that encompasses all five tests. Like, Hey, I was at 440 and now I'm at 480. Like that's such a huge improvement. And it's also something that we can show the parents. Um, Cause the parents obviously want to see that, you know, they're paying for this service. You know, what are they getting out of it? Is their kid getting better? That's a really important thing for me to be able to highlight 
Um, and the kids want to see that as well. For me, the challenge is like, even this morning right now, I've got my athlete group right now is 12 this morning and I got, you know, two kids starting it's open enrollment. So kids can join at any time. There's not, you know, a kid might be joining on week two of a cycle and it's my job just to kind of get them in the mix and adjust things as he needs to, to make sure that they're not, I'm not, I don't just necessarily throw them to the wolves and say, Hey, keep up with everybody. Um, but also I can't necessarily give them some entirely different onboarding protocol. So it's kind of a marriage of the two. So within the first week with like our performance athletes, I try to get the metrics mixed in there within our training on those three vert jump, triple broad jump, med ball throw. And then whenever time hits, we'll get our first number on, on the trap bar deadlift and our bench press. Whenever I feel like number one, they've got the movement competency and the strength to be able to really see something there. We're not going to show up day one and test those things. Um, as far as like teaching and stuff like that, what's been really powerful as well is like when a kid shows up, let them pair off with one of our athletes who's been here a while and knows kind of how we do things and how the warmups go and, you know, how to read the TV, let some of our current athletes teach has been very powerful for me to do or, or to use that. Then with our adults, it's a similar thing where I've spent two or three years finding out what I want to assess and to test and what's important to the adults that can also fit a wide range of people from 25 to 75. So I don't have to have four different protocols. So we've got three or four tests that we do as well um, with other adults. And we also have um, an in-body scanner where they can do body fat composition, a start and end date on that. So the onboarding, when they come in, like they do, they could do a free trial if they'd like to. Once they sign up for a membership, I would like for them to do a, an, with our adults, a body composition scan. And same thing, like within the training, we're going to try to get, we do like a weighted plank. We do a dead hang. We do um, a push up test, an inverted row test, and we do a farmer carry for distance. Those are the main ones that basically anybody walking in, they could do those tests um, to some extent. And then we also get some strength numbers on them, you know, as the training goes. I don't try to force that on them super quick. Um, but getting a consistent onboarding process down is a challenge just because largely it's because it's an open enrollment format. So people just join. And a lot of times they're joining right in the middle of a current cycle going on. So it takes them a good one, two weeks, three weeks it takes them a week sometimes just to figure out what the abbreviations are on the TV, <laughs> you know, what the, what the DB stands for and all this stuff. So that's always a challenge. It could be a little, a little frustrating um, at the start, probably for them, but I always just try to keep encouraging like, Hey, you're doing an awesome job. Trust me, this stuff, you'll be able to read this stuff. Like it's, you know, your little kid book at home reading to your kids. Like you'll, you'll know what the TV says before too long. But it is pretty overwhelming, especially our adults. A lot of the people around here are walking into, they've never been in like a a weight room setting before or know what like a super set is, or they have no idea. They, you know, you three by 10, there's plenty of people that I've worked with have no idea that, that means sets by reps. You know, it's just like, I don't even know what that three by 10 might as well be three, what jumping jacks and 10 setups. I don't know what that means. So that's a challenge. Um, but our people are all great. They pick up on it super quick, but, um, it's taken me a long time to figure out, I guess, what to focus on within that onboarding, but with our older people and athletes, it is important to, I want to get a baseline. So we have something to always kind of come back to. Yeah. That's something that most high schools don't have to really deal with too much is like the start and stop date or somebody jumping in. It's like possibly a move in, Possibly somebody picks up the class somehow, you know, but really what it comes down to is like everybody's going to kind of be onboarded at the same time. Um, so it's like things that you oftentimes don't have to think about. But I do love the buddy system of things of like pairing people up, but they've been there or they haven't been there. Right. Just pair those people up because obviously the, one of the things that comes from that is the people that have been there, they feel like they're in a leadership role and that they have value in doing the things other than just training hard, right? Like that they are actually helping someone else and who doesn't feel great after they've helped someone else. So yeah, love that. Um, one of the things that I'm sure a ton of listeners would love to listen about 
Um, I think maybe you've talked about this in the past on the show, actually, but still good to recap. And it's been a long time since we talked about it. Uh, but tell us about your scoring system. Uh, just a general overview, enough that somebody could build their own um, if they wanted to do it. So you said you have five things that you're doing for this, correct? And right. in, the, in the past, you possibly used different exercises. I know you have and a different amount, uh, but now you've you've created it um, you know, for those five. And it's something where you can kind of track and it's a way for kids to see progress. Let's hear about it. Yeah. So I call it, right now, I call it the power club. When I was at William Jewell, we call it the iron cardinal. And it looked even, I think at William Jewell, we had four exercises um, and the exercises were different, but the concept's the same. I mean, the same, it's, we got it. I took it from um, Joe Quinn and Northwest has already stated as the quad score. And I'm pretty sure they still do. The idea is you have certain tests that you test all the time and it's tied to a point scale and it gamifies testing where the kids are trying to get as many points as they can. Um, our kids here at the private in my, at my gym, just, they, I can tell that like it, it turned up the testing a notch where it's not just a number anymore. Now it's a game. So ours is again, it's five things. It's our vert jump, triple broad jump, med ball throw, trap bar deadlift and bench press. Those are both five, five RMs. And anytime a kid, and I also have a, a bell. I've seen that happen in quite a few spots too, or um, we have a PR bell now. So anytime a kid sets a PR, we have a get better board. Get better is kind of the overall slogan of my company. It's just about getting better. Uh, where I show everybody's like first test and anytime they set a PR, they can write their uh, new PR on the board as well to where anytime and then they set a PR, they can ring the bell, but we have a power score. So anytime we test those things, you know, they get their point total. And then I set up power clubs within that. So again, the challenge with this, I changed the exercises because I wanted to, I need exercises that number one are important that are, you know, it's, I want, this is showing me something, not just random exercises that don't make any difference. Um, but they're showing me something and also they can fit a wide range of kid and they can see progression on it. And the same idea with the power score is creating a power club. So I got a scale that fits a seventh through 12th grade athlete. And obviously that can be a big range of athlete, big range from a you know seventh grader to a 12th grader. There might be 150 point difference on that scale. So within the power clubs, you have different levels to the club. So we have a four levels, the top level being, um, I think of probably close to 40 or 50 kids that I put through it. I've only had two athletes, one boy and one girl reach level four, um, a decent amount in the level three, a pretty good amount in level two. And then I make level one, almost you're going to, you're going to make level one. Um, it's not necessarily that it's just like do it and you're in, but I do see value in like kids seeing immediate because um, we give them shirts as well when the club they hit and different colored shirts for each level. So we want kids to feel like they're not even on the board. You know, that's, that's very discouraging for those kids. So um, level one, like almost everybody gets in it. And then this level two is very makeable for like, what I've seen for like our eighth and ninth graders, a lot of them will get into like that level two and then that level three and four, um, kind of the best athletes are going to make it to level three and four, just like any other power club or any other like testing, um, genetic game you're playing, but it is a way to where kids can see a score that encompasses everything, but also keeps them motivated to try to keep getting as many points as you can. Cause you don't want to create something where like day one, your best athlete, like maxed out the club, you know, maxed everything out. So like, there's no incentive for them to keep working hard. That was a challenge. Um, but I like where it's at right now. It's been pretty good. Yeah. And obviously coaches have found a lot of different ways to do this. There's a lot of ways to set it up. Um, one more time to reiterate, what he's saying with the point scale is like, let's say you jump a 30 on a triple broad jump. Well, a 30 is really good. So if his if his point total goes up to 150, maybe that's like 140 points. Um, so it's it'd be toward the top. And then, you know, like a 16 would be not so hot. So now it's more like 
60 points or 50 points or whatever his to point total would be. And you just make a range for that and whatever makes sense for you and your population. So some, some coaches love like standard deviations. They're like number gurus. They'll take all the data and then they'll find averages and then do standard deviations from that average. Um, there's a lot of different ways to come up with your point totals. Sometimes it's just simpler than it's just simple. What's the best? What's the worst? What's the scale in between? And just go for it. So um, that was awesome. I remember doing it as a Northwest Missouri State athlete. And I remember there's like this last chance type deal. So you do all the tests and you have like this last chance type deal. And I remember doing standing long jump and hitting uh, the the score that I needed to to hit the next level up. And it was a big deal. It was a really big deal. To oh, me. yeah. And I was I was at that time for that particular time that I was trying to hit it. I was 19, I think. So yeah. and I, so I was a 19 year old tied to this stupid scoring gamification thing, but it mattered. It was a big deal to me. Um, it got it was the best deal. out of you. It got yeah. the best. Out of you. And I think if anybody's going to create a system like that, I mean, I'd be up front with your athletes too. like tell them, like, if you don't know where to set the scale, you know, follow some reason of logic, set it and then tell your athletes, hey, just FYI, this is where the scale's at now, but you know, I might have to change it based off of you know the testing that comes in and stuff. I might have to change the scale, I'll let you know if we do. But um, you know, that because that's burnt me a couple of times as well. But yeah, there's a million ways you could set the scale. Depends on how exclusive you want to make it. Uh, you could do a girls and a boys scale. We follow all the same scale. My point club totals are different. So like where the where like an elite girl lives on the scale is just gonna be lower than an elite boy, just naturally. Um uh, but they're not trying to get as many points to get in certain to the club. You know, it's like 50 points le less or something just based off how my scale goes. But we've done it. We've done it opposite of that, where I create two different scales and everybody's trying to get the same amount of points. Um, so it's just it's however you want to make it. And if any coaches want what I do, reach out to me. I'll send you my scale and you can adjust it however you want. That would be that would be a good thing. If you're a coach listening to this, just reach out to uh, Gage. He's got uh, the email in the show notes. And just being able to see it and conceptualize it and make it to your system. I mean, you can do it all with paper and pen. Um, you can do it. Uh, you could do all the testing within T Builder. And then from those numbers, like as a coach, then you could assign values. Um, you could take all the Team Builder numbers and throw them in Google Sheets and have it automatically populate and then be able to print out a PDF for each kid. Like there's a number of different ways you could do it. Um, just a way for kids to be to pursue their best. So what I would say, Gage says to get better, whatever your tagline is, man, like just being able to level up is such a big deal. Gage, thanks for explaining through that. I know sometimes that's a little bit cumbersome when you're talking about something and you can't have a visual because podcasts, they're awesome, but I know. Yeah. limiting, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. It's because of the limitation that they're good. Okay, Gage, next question. When you think about the transition that you made from being at the college level um, to being in the private sector, uh, what does it look like for you as far as challenges? Like it's a totally different atmosphere. <laughs> There's a totally different uh, business portion of things. There's so many different aspects that you have to think through and it all rides and dies on you. Like if your business is great, that's because you've made it that way. If it sucks, that's on you too, right? So what are some of the things that you've had to struggle through to make sure that uh, it's going on the right path and it is it is where you want it to be? Uh, yeah, so there's a, there's a, a lot. Um, I say that the first that come to my mind is just when you're a collegiate strength coach, you don't have to think about marketing or retention or advertisement or any type of business concepts at all. At least I didn't, maybe some people do, but I didn't. Um, so, you know, getting, when you have a certain business model, like my, mine is a group business model. Um, the pricing set that way. It's, um, it's not a one-on-one, -on -one, so it's it's much cheaper than like a one-on-one. -on -one. It's it's a group training model. You're, you're training to you're paying to train in a group, just like you would at a high school or a college. But as from a business, that only works if you're training a group. So if you got group training prices and you're only training two three people, that's not a that's not a successful business model. So we've grown beyond that, luckily, and we're we're doing some good things, but. Just the the content, the education side, trying to figure out like what's important to prospective parents and, and clients and athletes on to get them in your doors is a challenge that I never had to worry about for one second. Um, 
while at William Jewell at Northwest Missouri State. So just having the time to produce content to to market and to do those things is a challenge. Um, from a programming side, I would say, again, I, I like structure. I like I'd like to look at a calendar and know like what's going on when. You know, I don't have that necessarily. It's just always ongoing. And yes, the athletes that come in, especially like my older athletes, they are of course on a school schedule where they have a, you know, they're in season right now and they're building towards a um, conference championship tournament or district championship tournament or something like that. But for me, not programming the whole team's training program within that calendar is different. And within my group, I got a lot of kids and I, just like you would experience, you know, a lot of high school coaches, I'd imagine you got a lot of kids that are on that basketball schedule right now, but then you got a lot of kids who aren't, who are just in their off season, a lot of kids who are um, training for golf or whatever. So there's, there is that challenge of, I think the bigger challenge, I guess, is just not having control over the whole training program where I was used to having that. Um, there's benefits to that. I, I've learned to enjoy that, but how I've combated that a little bit within my gym is still programming towards some types of endpoint. Like even with our adults, I mentioned that stuff we have for assessment. So our programming is built to like assess those things every like 12 weeks, 12 to 15 weeks, depending on how the, the calendar shapes out. So that does give me something to be programming towards um, instead of just, you know, random stuff all the time. Um, we are shooting for something every three to four months. We're going to test these five things. So how can I get work backwards from there and improve those metrics? That helps me with the adults a lot. Those are like up top of my head. Those are the two biggest challenges I'd say. Um, and again, still, still trying to figure it out and still trying to tweak it to make it the best it could be, but it's, they're definitely, um, different than what I was previously used to. I've heard on your podcast, and I think you stole it from somebody else possibly, but um, three days for the rest of your life, that's a different mentality, right? Then um, we're going to program to win. You know, we're going to program to make the best athletes that we possibly can. It's it's a change. It's a mindset shift, right? And the LTAD model in general, just like from preschool all the way to death, um, you know, when you're programming in that, it, it is, that, that does uh, change a lot of things. I love how you put it in though. These every three months or so, we're going to have this time that we're going to check our KPIs so that you're actually working towards something. I think that's really good. How about this? Um, your adults, they've been going for, you know, three three years now. Um, how do you keep it fresh every once in a while? Because if you're going in and you're hitting tier every day, right, and the exercises change, but, the, you know, people get in that rhythm and a lot of people, they like rhythm, right? They, they don't want, but every once in a while, it's nice for something just a little bit different. What do you do for those mix up times? Uh, the main ones I'll do, um, I'll switch up the format within itself. But if you look at it again, how I do tier is just exercise selection, how you execute it, I think can look a bunch of different ways. So I mix up, especially with our accessory work, I mix things up quite a bit. You know, we, we do three week cycles and I do like a six week block. So each six week block has two, three week cycles where, you know, we'll keep the main tier movements the same for those two cycles. And then we'll switch them out. So like I'm doing sumo deadlifts right now, for example, for we'll do two, three week cycles of sumo deadlifts, and then we'll move into a trap bar deadlift for six weeks. So that's how we switch out a lot of our KPI or main exercises. But then I'll, I'll change up the format too, where like this cycle, you know, maybe we have our just typical strength work, but then our accessory, this is going to be a 15 minute AMRAP. So it's still, it's tier still. I mean, it's the, it's the tier rotation of movements, maybe some other stuff mixed in, you know, and then this cycle is just going to be straight sets. And then this cycle we're going to do, um, like right now our finisher, we're doing like, you know, band squats for time. So like just implementing a bunch of different formats I found helps a lot just to keep things fresh a little bit where it's not always just sets and reps. It's as many as you can do for this minute or whatever it is and then every june as well we do um i take a break from my programming and we do this crush cancer book workouts there's a bunch of just random workouts in there that i adapt for our, our space if we need to where there's a lot of just different formats completely different to how i program for a whole month and that gives me some little mental break 
but it's also kind of fun for the the um our members too, just to take a break from something else. But what I found every I guess I've only done it two years, but both years that I've done it, by the end of it, everybody's like, I'm ready to get back to our normal thing. Because like our adults, like they they really like their routine. Like they they want it to be on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like it's supposed to be. And anytime I have to change it, even if it's like, okay, this week my kid's sick on Monday, we're going to go Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Like it throws them off. <laughs> and it, I've, I've really grown to appreciate that because I'm the same way. I've really grown to appreciate that with like people like their routine and even the monthly or the yearly calendar, like how everything changes from week to week, especially with the the parents who got kids in school, you know, August is a lot different than June and June's a lot different than December. So like there's ebbs and flows to it. So figuring out how to program within that's always interesting as well. I bet. And I guess the, uh, the thing that I think through with that is like, you still have a rhythm, you still have some systems, but within your system, you have stuff that adds variety. I think that's really smart. And then the, uh, I was just thinking about Riley's crush cancer. Um, I think my dad contributed to that, to that book, mm -hmm. um, uh, on behalf of my uncle and just a really cool deal. Could you just do a, I, I know we've talked about it in the past, um, but it's been a while. Uh, could you just do like a quick overview of crush cancer? So people kind of get an idea of, of what you're talking about and then how you run that within your gym. Yeah. So we, we put together a book. It's a compilation of, uh, just essentially workouts of the day. And we open this up. I try to post in a bunch of different um, strength conditioning uh, groups and everything. But this was in honor of my cousin, Riley, who was in 20 years old in 2019, um, was diagnosed with leukemia on July 10th, I believe is the date. Um, a very rare, aggressive form passed away in September um, of that same year. And he was actually within the first three or four days of his first strength conditioning internship at Northwest Missouri State with Joe Quinlan is when he first, start, first started to get really sick. Um, so he was an aspiring strength coach. He wanted, he was, he would have been a great strength coach, super hard worker, really awesome personality, um, would have been a great strength coach. And he was on that track when he was diagnosed with cancer. So during his um, treatment time, we put together this book um, as a fundraiser to help cover medical expenses and also just as a resource. So these, every strength coach who committed, contributed to, and you did as well, uh, I think there's 64 workouts, but every workout, a coach just, whatever they wanted to do, um, some are really tough. <laughs> some are some are just like, go walk up a flight of stairs for 10 minutes or something. Um, but every coach dedicated that workout to someone they know, um, you know, who was impacted by cancer, whether they ultimately passed away or they beat it or whatever and everywhere in between it's a really cool book um so every june riley's birthday's june 25th or uh, 4th or 6th gosh dang it i got three family members all the same birthdays there um at the end of every june we send out uh or we do a crush cancer event where we do like an honor a memorial workout for riley at the gym and then that whole month of june um, my gym strong life program is we just pick random workouts from that book and do it. It's, it's a lot of fun. That's good stuff. Thank you for, for going through that and gauge the, uh, the thing that I remember with Riley was just, he was always, um, he was always laughing, always smiling, always pushing people, uh, just to, to be the best they could be. I remember doing the camp with them, but then like always like poking fun too and, and having a good time. And I, like um, when he started at Northwest Missouri State working for Joe, I was just like, man, this is such a cool deal because it went from when I met him when he was in high school to being able to see him start to go down that path of being a strength coach is is pretty sweet. So um, one of my former student athletes was interning with him at the same time. Uh, just surreal. Just, a you know, because I up here it feels like a different world than when I was down at, at Maryville and it was like two worlds were colliding at that point. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just really cool stuff, man. Uh, my, my bell just rang. I'm in a prep period doing this. Um, so I need you to tell me the last question. Okay. How are you making the big time where you're at? Also, you're the one that came up with this title of the show. So you better kill this. <laughs> uh, I'd say I'm just trying to bring, you know, professional strength conditioning to our you know rural Northwest Missouri area to, basically anybody who wants to be, to get better, you know, from our 
four-year-olds up to our 75-year-olds and everywhere in between, just trying to, you know, give them what they need, when they need it, how much they need it, the best that I can do, um, and be the, a great coach for them um, in our community, something that we don't have around here that um, try to just get a little bit better, bit better every day, just like our slogan goes, get better. So try to be that myself for my kids and my my wife and my the rest of my family. So yeah, I guess that's it. I haven't had to answer that question myself. So at least on, on camera. So appreciate you me asking. <laughs> no problem. Hey, this was a lot of fun. Just getting you on flipping the script a little bit and making you answer all the questions. Um, if you would like to reach out to Gage, his stuff's in the show notes. Uh, definitely look into the stuff that he does on social media. Uh, a lot of great video clips, a lot of things for stimulating ideas, uh, especially when you have to figure out, man, what's this look like? All the way from pre-K to 75 years old, right? So um, I, I really appreciate the time that you spent. Um, well, us working together, doing podcast stuff together, and, and now just being able to learn from you and, and uh, interview you. That's It's good stuff. So thanks, Gage. Thanks for having me, bud.